Hey, what's going on everybody? Steve here, Rankin Profit over at RankinProfit.com. Coming back to you with another video. We got my main man, Jesse from Connecticut Thrift School on what's YouTube. Up? Killing the thrifting game, killing the YouTube game. And um, man, a lot of people were excited when they heard that you were coming on. So how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm actually excited to be here. I haven't been on a live video in a while. I get asked a lot by a lot of people and I usually turn them down. So you're lucky. Oh man. Now I'm even more excited, dude. Mm -hmm. So how you been? Last time we connected, it was at the, uh, what the Connecticut thrifting meetup. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's been a while and you're living it up in Miami. It's an actual blizzard outside up here and it's 30 degrees. So uh, you're really loving the weather change. I mean, granted we're all stuck inside anyways, but yeah, for real, man. There's definitely been a lot of changes going on. Um, but yeah, I've known Jesse for what, maybe like five years now or so? At least, yeah. And uh, Jesse has a YouTube channel, which is called Thrift School. You can see his name on the screen. If you're not following Jesse, definitely check him out. His YouTube channel is really cool. He, um, As of late, you've been doing a lot of just videos where you go out thrifting, you go out sourcing, and you show exactly what you buy. Uh, you show exactly what you sell. And it's just, it's a unique it's, it's definitely unique and entertaining content. So check him out on YouTube. But do you mind sharing with everybody your story? How did you get started for the people who don't know you? Um, how did you get into thrifting? Sure. Uh, so on and so forth. Yeah. So I started uh, working at a company that sold. And I always tell this story. And it's always so ridiculous to me. I started working at a company that sold items on eBay and Amazon. I didn't even know what Amazon really was. I mean, I purchased a few things. I hardly even shopped online at this point. We're talking like seven years ago is when I started working at this company, uh, maybe even longer ago. And uh, after I'd been there for about a year, I started thinking, man, I can sell things online. Let me start watching YouTube. So while I'm at work, I'm sitting there, I'm typing in on YouTube, how to sell on eBay. And then your videos popped up and I'm like, oh, wow, look at that. Okay, that's easy. And um, I put in my... I didn't even put in my two weeks. My car actually ended up breaking down on me mm. and I worked a few towns away and uh, I had to stop going to work. So it was kind of, it all fell into place and I just stopped going to that job and said, well, I don't have a car. I'd ride my little moped. I had a little yellow moped. You had a I'd moped? Ride that. Yeah. I rode that to the thrift store in town. I had a little church thrift store. I'd ride there. I'd fill up a little basket in the back. I'd come home and I'd sell things on eBay and I had no savings. I had no nothing. I wasn't making any money. I was losing money in the beginning, but it was the best way to jump into it for me. So how did you transition from, because we all go through this, we're learning something new. It doesn't even have to be reselling. It could be anything. Even when you start like a new job, right? I remember, you know, seven years ago when I was working at the Cracker Barrel, that first couple of weeks was horrible. Like learning how to serve tables and learning oh, the yeah. menu. And, you know, when you start an eBay business or an Amazon FBA business, it's tough at first. So how did you like, what, what tips can you give for how you transition from being that beginner, making mistakes, losing money to finally, you know, getting to a point where you're confident and consistently like making a profit in your business? Yeah. So I, I wasn't making money probably for the first year. I mean, I had no idea what wow. I was doing. I, it was, it was probably a little less than that, but I mean, I had no bills. I was living at home with my dad. Um, I didn't even pay my phone bill. I didn't have a car for the first few months. I had zero bills really. Right. Um, I would splurge on like PlayStation network so I could play online with friends, but that's 50 bucks a year. So I really had all the money to work with. I remember digging in between, uh, the cushions of the couches upstairs in my car, <laughs> not my car, in uh, my dad's car, looking for quarters and things like that, just to go to the thrift store to thrift with. I had nothing. Right. And, uh, I think for me, the best way was, well, I have nothing. There's only, you can only go up from here. So <laughs> I just started, you know, getting used to watching YouTube videos really is how I learned everything. And I get asked that a lot. People say, well, how did you learn how to do this? This is so daunting. I just typed in on YouTube how to do this. And there were a lot less videos back then. Uh, I mean, we're talking six, seven years ago. There were way less videos. Yeah. So nowadays, my best advice would be just go to YouTube watch videos for a week straight, right? Don't do anything else. Just watch YouTube videos. They're kind of entertaining, honestly. And just watch them for a week straight. Don't do anything else. And then just start pulling things from your house, right? Mm -hmm. If you have no money, just start grabbing things from your house that you don't use anymore. I'm sure if you play video games, you have two or three sitting around. If you have random pieces of clothes that you don't wear in your closet, grab them, list them. It's the best way to get started. So what's your actual strategy when it comes to, you know, thrifting? So I've seen Jesse thrift in real life, not just on YouTube, because a lot of people on YouTube you watch, you don't really know, are they actually doing it? Do they know what they're doing? This guy firsthand, I can tell you is psycho, psycho when he goes into a thrift store, 
all over the place. He's attacking the mugs. He's attacking the clothing. He's going after the board game, his electronics, the household items. It's, I remember it was, must have been like two years ago when I really realized I'm getting old because I couldn't keep up with you, man. Like you were going berserk. So what's your strategy? When you're in a thrift store, are you looking for items to sell on eBay, Amazon, Poshmark? Do you only sell on one platform? Where do you sell your items that you find at the thrift store? So I sell, I would say it's like 80, 20 at the moment. It switches all the time for me. I'm Sometimes I devote more time to one platform, sometimes more the other. I'm about 80% Amazon, 20% eBay at the moment. It might even be a little more Amazon. Uh, so first things first, in my mind, I'm thinking Amazon. I want to go to the games, the toys, the electronics, try and find some new in-box items, things that really stick out to me. I've been doing it for years, so I'm able to just walk to any section of the store and kind of do a once over with my eyes before I have to pull out my phone. And that helps you get that with time. I had no idea what I was doing. Again, for the first year, first two years, first three years, I didn't really know everything I was looking at. Um, now it's pretty easy, but I still scan everything. And I always say this in all my videos, scan everything, right? Even if it's used, right? Just scan it, see if it's maybe yeah. something that's worth a whole bunch new, keep an eye out for it in the future. So that's what I do. And then after I go through all the the new items, things that are good for Amazon, like the electronics, the toys, the video games, CDs. I sell a lot of media. Uh, I will then possibly, if I feel like it, look for eBay stuff, look for clothing. And I hate selling clothing. Some people love it. I don't like it. So I don't have to do it. That's the well, thing. It's like dolphins, right? Don't you like the Miami Dolphins? I love the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. I thought <laughs> that was my dolphin shirt when I put it on, but it's my uh, Patagonia, thrifted Patagonia. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, always looking for dolphin stuff in the clothing racks. But uh, College Picker yeah. hooked me up. He sent me uh, some dolphin stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dumpster Markets hooked me up. He sent me some dolphin stuff. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. You, belong, you, you belong in Miami. <laughs> we got a, yeah. <laughs> we got a question from Jennifer Garfield asking How can you thrift with everything? when everything is locked up. Well, you told me, everyone knows what's going on right now. There's a bunch of craziness going on in the world and uh, it's disrupted our, um, you know, our normal reselling uh, adventures, if you want to call it that. But you said you were out today, um, out and about, Jesse. So, you know, Jennifer's saying that everything is locked up. Is everything locked up? What, what's your thoughts on, on, on how, you know, thrifters can go out there and still make money? Yeah, I mean, all the thrift stores are closed. Every single thrift store, every they're single all closed. Store. Yeah, they're all closed. How long um, have they been closed for? Uh, they, they were actually some of the last things to close. They're kind of greedy, honestly. Uh, they, they were <laughs> the last to close. They've been closed probably about uh, four or five days now. And, um, you know, people make fun of me because they see my death piles behind me, but I'm really glad to have them right now because when you <laughs> buy a lot of stuff in bulk, you're stuck with a lot of stuff that you're like, I'll get around to it on a rainy day, on a rainy day. Well, Things might be closed for a month here. Nobody knows. So I have more than a month's worth of stuff to go through. Uh, so I always recommend, you know, sometimes just buy a bunch, right? If you could buy huge lots of items, whether it's a local deal or from a thrift store, buy it. If you can't get around to it in one day, it's not the end of the world. As long as you have some dedicated space to it, it's not the end of the world. You can get to it later. Um, you know, you don't want to let it go ceiling high, which I've done. And my garage kind of looks like that right now, but Does it? yeah, my garage is pretty bad right now. <laughs> From a lot of local buys. Now you could meet up with people locally during times like this. Uh, it's a little iffy. I don't know if you yeah. want to really meet up with people. I haven't been um, but some stores are still open. Throw it to you Walmart. outside a car. Yeah. <laughs> Walmart is open. Uh, Target's open. And then you have stores that are closed like GameStop, but they do curbside pickup. So if you call in or place an order online, these stores are kind of open. You can drive up mm. and do your retail online arbitrage, pick it up in the store, like in front of the store, they'll drop the items off outside for you when you get there. Wow. And then you could go list them on Amazon or eBay. So there's a million different ways to make money right now. Online arbitrage is a great way to do it. Yeah. Fed Elvis is saying that pawn shops are open because I believe uh, pawn shops are classified as financial institutions. Okay. That's what I, I read. So um, I haven't checked. Closed. So I, I don't oh, know. I'm yeah, I only have one pawn shop in a pretty big radius for me, and it's closed. They have a sign on their door. So, I mean, it's really up to them if they want to close or not. Connecticut um, just put in a thing. The governor said that, you know, all non-essential workplaces, we want you to close. So a lot of okay. places just close just because. 
Got it. Mary McQueen is saying, I love how Jesse does the voiceovers and explains why he does or doesn't pick up certain things. We can use that knowledge anywhere we source. Yeah. Be sure to check them out. YouTube, Thrift School. Are you on Instagram as well? I am Thrift School on Instagram. I post on Instagram a lot on my stories. Awesome. Man, you got to follow him for his stories. I haven't, I got to follow you for your stories, man, because I've seen some of your stuff, man. We've had some crazy live streams in the past. Yeah, so. Not only thrifting stuff. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, that's funny. Um, <clears throat> Maria says, I am selling the Miami Dolphins on my eBay size medium. I could send it to you for free. That would be nice. I am a size medium, so I would take it. And, and I want to preface that by saying he wasn't a size medium the last time I saw. Well, a couple of thrift store, uh, Connecticut, thr and this, I don't mean this in any negative way, but <laughs> Jesse's lost a lot of weight. I'm so proud of you, man. You've worked your tail off. Yeah, man. Down to, what is it? Almost 30 pounds, about 27, 28 pounds. Yeah. yeah. It's since January 1st. So there's no excuses. There's only about three and a half months that I lost that weight. It was pretty easy. And I don't want to. I don't want to make it sound like, hey, it's super easy for everyone. I gained all that weight, so it wasn't easy to, for me to lose it. But once you set your mind to it, anything's possible. Love it. I love it, Jesse. How much money do you need to get started with? Not with retail arbitrage. I put the wrong thing in. Um, well, we could with, about yeah, with retail about. arbitrage or thrifting. Um, sure. This was for my last show. I forgot to edit out that question, <laughs> but um. Like how much money do you need? Like going to pawn shops, thrift stores, garage sales, but mostly thrift stores. Like, do you need like hundreds of dollars to start or? Uh, if you're doing retail arbitrage, probably if you're doing thrift stores, definitely not. I mean, you could get started with $2, right? Find one item, one book, one uh, video game in there, right? That sells for $20, $30. It's going to be a slower climb. And I mentioned this in the beginning, I was starting with quarters, right? I was starting with whatever I had. And I was going to the local church thrift stores that price things at a quarter a piece, right? And I was just trying to find whatever I could. I'd sit on it. I'd list it on eBay. If I could turn that 50 cents into $5 and then that $5 into $25, that's how you grow it. So you could really start it with anything. You could start it with nothing. I mean, like I said, start taking things from your house and then you could have that money to then go to the thrift store and make that money. Fat Elvis says debt, dead piles, dead or <laughs> <laughs> zombie apocalypse piles are my friends. I am cleaning my mystery corners every day. Who's, yeah, it's who's had that before? You clean, you clean out like a little mystery. I like that a little mystery corner, right? Yeah, Vanna White there just, and, and you don't know what you're going to find. You're like, holy crap, I have this hundred dollar video game. I can't believe I didn't list this up. Oh man, all the time. I, <laughs> I find stuff that I probably have stuff on my desk. I have Tony Robbins Ultimate Edge full course over here. I don't know why it's not listed. It's just sitting next to me. That's probably, you know, 50 you to Tony Robbins dollars. over there. Yeah. It's sitting uh <laughs> yeah. <got> Tony Robbins. <laughs> it's uh kind of a mess over here, but there we go. Oh, that's sweet. Look at that. Yeah, yeah we got the valet picker in the house right now. What's up, hey, Greg? What up? What up? Jazzy Battle. Is that your real last name? Battle. I'm going to get you in a thrift battle. I love that, Jazzy. My sales have drastically dropped. How do I get new product? So we touched on this a little bit, but what advice would you give to somebody, Jesse, who, you know, right now they're isolated inside and they're, you know, they're watching their sales drop. Are your sales dropping? It was weird. So my sales dropped really bad, like right in the beginning, maybe a week ago, they dropped pretty bad. And then now they're sky high. So it's random. I mean, I think it's all over the place. Um, just keep listing, right? You're going to keep finding stuff, adjust your prices maybe. So one thing I did was if you, yes. yeah, if you sell on eBay, send offers, I was just sending like 30, 40% offers on all these listings and a bunch of them sold. Oh. Um, that's a way to do it on Amazon. I love that nobody can ship things in right now, which I know it sounds weird, but you know what? They're all selling out. I don't like to fight for the lowest price all the time. So those people are selling out. Nobody else can send anything into Amazon. So now my old stock is starting to sell that I thought I'd have to wait for until Christmas. So that's pretty cool. So there's definitely different ways to get the, the money rolling right now. Big question. Is thrifting dead in 2020? Are there too many competitors going to Goodwills and Savers? Now we're not talking about you know, right now there's a bunch of stuff going on and obviously thrifting's dead because you can't go <laughs> to a thrift store. <laughs> uh, so far um, in 2020, thrifting is dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not even clickbait. Thrifting is dead in 2020. 
Oh man. Um, but when, when things get back to normal and, you know, prior to, you know, especially like March, like in January and beforehand, um, what's the status of thrifting? Um, and maybe you can say that, um, uh, taking into consideration like the five years that you've been doing it. So has it been getting easier? Has it been getting harder, less profitable, hundred percent honest, like give your honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean to be, yeah, not to sugarcoat it. It's definitely harder. Uh, it's a, yeah. it's a hundred percent harder. There's more people doing it. So it's going to be harder. Um, now it's still not impossible. I can still walk into a thrift store and walk out with 100, 200, 300 dollars profit, but it's just not going to happen as much as it used to in the past. Uh, and it's not so much because of the competition. It's because of the places you, you have the bosses, the higher ups taking these items and selling them online themselves. There's not much you can do about that. Um, I've talked you think that's happening a lot? Sorry to interrupt you, but how yeah. often is that happening? So, Every Goodwill in Connecticut, at least in Northwestern Connecticut, uh, they started sending their video games online to sell them online. So they were all gone. This happened a couple, few months ago. Now, uh, man, I was so pissed. Uh, video games are one of my main things. I like to <laughs> find. I couldn't find them anymore. Well, one day I walked back into the thrift store and there's video games there. I'm like, cool. They made a mistake. These were supposed to go online. Maybe some these. <laughs> I asked and they said that they stopped selling them online. Maybe they weren't doing as well as they thought they were. So it's kind of a give and take. So now all video games are back in these thrift stores. So, at, but that's kind of scary because you know that they know that they could sell these things online. They know that they could start jacking up these prices, putting things on eBay, putting things on Amazon, just because this one time it didn't work out for them doesn't mean that they're not going to try to do it again in the future. Um, but thrifting is definitely not dead. You could make a lot of money thrifting. I've actually shifted a lot of my uh, buying to local marketplaces because you can buy, you, you spend up a little bit more, but you could buy higher quality items like laptops or phones or Xboxes and Playstations, spend $150, sell it for $250, make $100 profit. Mm. Sometimes that's better than going to the thrift store to buy a $2 book and sell it for five or six bucks. Yeah, definitely agree. eBay addicts in the house. Yeah, keep listing every day on eBay. It's also important to have multiple streams of income. Do you For have sure. multiple streams of income, Jesse? Yeah, I have lots of streams of income, honestly. <laughs> I always forget how many I have. I I have a lot. I saw amazing eBay. watching your journey, man. Like it yeah. never it wasn't always like that for you. I remember one time I think we were both drinking. It was like three or four years ago. And we were talking about like multiple streams of income. We were like both drunk. This was a while yeah. ago. <laughs> it was just like <laughs> we were both going back and forth with ideas. I don't know if you remember, it was a while ago, but um it's cool to see how far you've come, man. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I I like to sell everywhere. I was just talking about. It. I said it in one of my most recent videos. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. And somebody commented, "What does that mean?" I was like, "You've never heard that saying before." <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's it's true. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Meaning, do not only sell on eBay. Do not only sell on Amazon. Do not only resell. I know some YouTubers get flack. I know you've gotten flack for it, shifting away from reselling, talking about Kindle publishing, talking about merch by Amazon, talking about whatever, whatever. Don't think that all you can do in life is buy and sell clothing on eBay. If you see money in something else, go for it. And that's what it's about. Don't, don't pin yourself in this corner that you can't get out of if something goes wrong. Yeah, I agree. Um, I would love your two cents on, let me pull this question down. Um, <clears throat> I would like your two cents on your predictions. What do you, I know nobody knows right now, but when do you think that things are going to recover with what's going on right now um, with thrifting and stuff? Do you see thrift stores opening up anytime soon? And obviously this is like, we might as well all just like, and, and everyone in the comments too, let's put out a number, seven days. Let's, let's say in days, seven days, 20 days, 50 days. Like nobody knows this is all just like gambling, but yeah. what do you think? Like if you had to throw out a random guess, like when do you think thrift stores will start opening back up again? I think they're going to be as soon as they can, as soon as the government says, yeah, you can open thrift stores. Like I said, we're one of the last to close. And I think they're going to be one. Of the first <laughs> to open. It's just the way they are. Um, Why are they the last to close? You think I'm, 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 uh, I'm egging them on right now. I'm egging I'm them on. Greedy, man. They, I saw, I had to drop off some donations right before they closed because I had to get rid of some stuff. And, uh, the kid in the back taking all these donations, no gloves, no mask, no nothing. He's just back there touching everything. They don't care. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it's not just Goodwill. I mean, I'm sure all thrift stores are like that, savers, whatever. It doesn't matter. But um, I think, you know, I don't know how long everything is shut down for. It could be a month. I, I don't think they even have an end date in sight in Connecticut. They haven't mentioned an end date. Um, 
So who knows? Could be a month. I'm hoping before June. I had vacation planned to go to Miami in June. So we already have that uh, hotel and the oh. airplane tickets. And um, my girlfriend paid three eighty for her ticket. And then two weeks later, this you happened for like four bucks. bucks. I know, I know. I was supposed to, I was supposed to go to Connecticut on uh, the twenty fifth, and it was like two sixty for round trip. And then I looked again, twenty one dollars the other day. Yeah, twenty one dollars. I'm not getting in a plane though, so it doesn't matter. I was driving down to uh, Miami anyways, so it doesn't matter. She's taking a plane. I'm driving. Well, man, you're welcome to come through. Oh, Stay at my place. Do something. It'll be fun for sure. Um, you know, out of all the people guessing how long it's going to take until things recover, I think Fat Elvis is correct. 16.6 .6 days. Sounds about right. Yeah, definitely sounds about right. But people are saying two months, two weeks, two months or more. So definitely not, mostly I just – Definitely not two weeks. I think it's going to be longer than that. I know. You just got to – I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Hey, you know. next week. <laughs> they could – everything could just be better in a week. Hey, we got Robert. He was at the Connecticut Thrifty Meetup saying Goodwill's online sites are still pumping stuff out. I just received an order that I placed three days ago. So is Robert sourcing from Goodwill? Is that what he means, Jesse? Yeah, probably uh, the Goodwill's online website. I actually know Robert. Him and me have done a couple local picks uh, this past month. Uh, he met, really? Yeah, he met somebody. He reached out to me and said, hey, you want to go clear out this person's basement? And I said, yeah. And we've been clearing out this basement and I've been filming it and the videos aren't up yet, but uh, it's pretty cool. It's an ex Amazon seller about 10 years ago. So this is old dead stock sitting in this basement garage for 10 years piled to the ceiling. Tease me, tease us all with a, a couple of the things. If you're allowed to, I don't want to get sure. you to get in trouble, but um, sure, tease yeah. us a little with what you got in there. Uh, I got a whole bunch of sealed video games, uh, sealed big box PC games. I just sold one today for like 40, 50 bucks. And I'm paying good money for this stuff. I mean, we're talking one to three dollars a piece on these items. And um, I know Robert sold a, a toy for I think it was two hundred dollars from this. You sicko, Robert! <laughs> it's crazy. We've we've been finding stuff. I mean, left and right, just a lot of sealed toys from ten years ago. Because oh, I'll tell Vinny if Vinny's watching right now, he's gonna. You were actually. Out. I, I meant to reach out to you. I need Vinny's number because he's gonna be the guy that clears everything else out that we don't want to mess with. Really? Yeah, I'll give it to you for sure. He'll be he'll be there in five seconds flat, guaranteed. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So, you you um, how did Robert find the deal? Um, well, we thrift at a thrift store in town, not in town, but in the state, and he was buying stuff, scanning stuff, and a lady walked up to him and said, "Hey, are you selling that stuff online?" I said, "Yeah." No. I said, oh, I used to sell online. I don't do it anymore. I stopped years ago. Would you like to come take a look? He went and he cherry picked all the best stuff. And then he gave me a call and said, Hey man, do you want to come? There's no way I could buy all this. Um, that and much? Yeah. There's, we still have thousands of items there that we haven't gone through. I mean, him and me scanned CDs and DVDs only for probably like seven to eight hours one night. And she came yeah, back like, and brought us dinner, nachos and stuff like that. What? It was cool. This is like the opposite of like a thrift store, right? A thrift store will let you die. You can be yeah. there buying stuff all day long. And if you were like to the manager, can I have a bite to eat? I'm really hungry. What would they say? Uh, to get, get lost. <laughs> There's a vending machine <laughs> in the lobby. <laughs> I've, I've just messing around. I know how Jesse feels about the thrift store people. So I'm enabling them hardcore yeah, during the video. <laughs> I never sugarcoat it. I, I want to actually tell a quick story. I was in yes. uh, my Goodwill. And one of the workers there is like, hey, I know you from YouTube. I go, hey, man, how's it going? And we talked for a little bit. He goes, man, my manager, he knows that you talk crap about his pricing. And I was like, oh, and the manager no. said, oh, hi. And I just said hi to him. And he's like, you don't like my pricing. And I said, no, <laughs> that's it. Was this at Red, White, and Blue? No, this is at Goodwill. Yeah. Wow. So the manager, how did he know? He watched it. Do they all watch our videos? Is that what they're doing? Okay, so I didn't think so, but I mean, lately every employee has been like, "Hey, I'm watching YouTube." So I guess. Wow, that's kind of but crazy. That's why I work very straight up and and forward in my videos with pricing, and I let them know. And I say, "Hey, this is priced way too high," and I've seen it in the glass case for a month. You should probably lower the price, and then it's it's lowered sometimes. So, it wow. Works. Um, want to give a big shout out to Erica. She's actually from, I, I believe, um, 
West Haven crushing it with Poshmark. So if we got any more Poshmark sellers in the house, say what's up. Good to see you here, Erica. Do you know uh, Margaret with um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Texas what's her name? Yeah, Texas Scout Treasures. One time she went to a thrift store, and um, you know how she buys and sells like a lot of jewelry and stuff. Oh. <laughs> they had they had a big. Uh, you know how they put the jewelry in like the vases? Yeah. They had a picture of her on the vase. <laughs> so you could sell this stuff on eBay, <laughs> like a link to her YouTube channel. And they had it like priced super high. So they were using her to As be able to push the prices higher. Oh man, I you know, I feel like a lot of people would go in there and raise the storm. I would <laughs> turn it into a marketing strategy and plan with it and make money out of it. Like, hey, if you want to use my image and you don't want to get in trouble, let's work something out where you can pay me to put my face all over the store. And I would do it. Oh my gosh, that is <laughs> crazy. That is hilarious. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. How do you analyze a deal before you buy it from a thrift store? So, you know, I've seen you at thrift stores, you're running around, you're going crazy. Um, let's talk eBay specifically because with Amazon, you're scanning it and using the data on the Amazon seller app to make a, a buying decision. But what specifically are you looking for? What's the most important factors that you're thinking about in your mind when it comes to, am I going to pick or pass on this item that's caught my eye at the thrift store? Yeah, that's, that's it, you know, it is way easier on eBay, on Amazon, way easier. It just tells you how much money you're going to make. On eBay, you got to do a little more research, of course. You got to look through the solds, but it's not just looking through the solds. I see so many people that don't even look through the solds. They just type it in on their phone and go, oh, wow, this Nick Jr. I can't even pull it out. I have so much stuff on my desk. Uh, this little Mech Warrior toy is selling on eBay for $20. Woohoo. But then you click on the solds and you see one sell for $40, one sell for $10, one sell on auction for eight yeah. because he's bidding on this item. So then I like to actually click at the completed listings and see, okay, maybe 48 things are completed. Then I click on sold and see, okay, 10 have sold. Okay, that's not a very great sell through. So many of these items aren't actually selling. So that kind of helps determine how much I want to pay for an item. If I'm only going to double my money, spend 10 to make 10, eh, it's not a fast seller, probably don't want to mess with that. If it's an item that has 98 completed and 97 sold, like, all right, cool. I'll spend 10 to make five on this because I know it's going to sell fast. I'll get a quick money, quick flip. That's kind of how I analyze those situations. Yeah, I'm going to share with you um, while you catch your breath a, uh, a a big mistake that I made when I first started. And I noticed a lot of people making it. And it kind of stems from what you just said. When I first got started, I would buy any and everything that was making a profit. So I was big into clothing. And before you before you know it, I had a huge death pile of like a thousand items. And like I had a couple hundred that were only making like four or five dollars profit that were long tail. So a big mistake I see a lot of people making is they just buy anything that makes a profit without considering, like you were saying, the um, like the market demand, right? Because that's what completed listings shows you not only what it's selling for, but how many are listed, how many actually sell, how often, so on and so forth. So that's a big mistake. What are some other mistakes, Jesse, that maybe you made in the past and you notice that other beginner resellers make when they start thrifting? Uh, definitely going too deep in an item. I've done that lots of times mm -hmm. where I scan something, see it's going for a lot, especially on Amazon, right? I just scan, I look, oh my gosh, this item's selling for a great amount. Let me buy all 50 of them in the store. I get home, starts listing them online, and then Amazon jumps on the listing and there's no money to be made. Uh, you got to do a little more research than just looking at the price, not caring about rank. That is huge on Amazon. Just like I was talking about the eBay sell-through, on Amazon, you have a rank. And if that rank is showing a high number, odds are it's not going to sell very fast. I used to not care. Be like, eh, it'll sell eventually. That's not always the case. <laughs> it could take two years and Amazon now charges fees to keep things in their warehouses. So you, I've ran into so many resellers that don't care about the rank and they'll sell a CD that's ranked a million. I'm like, Hey, that's never going to sell <laughs> $3 on this. And how many more do you have in your cart at $3 that you're just wasting 40, $50 here. And uh, I see that a lot. And I always try to tell people, you know, really pay attention to the rank. There's so many great charts on just Google images or wherever you type it in, just Amazon sales rank sell through chart and you'll find it and you'll see what, you know, numbers you want to hit in each category. Yeah. I'd be curious to know what, um, what the audience thinks as well. What advice would you give 
um, people who are just getting started? What are some of the biggest mistakes you've made? So I'll, I'll go sure, <clears throat> go through the comments and shout them out. We got some really cool comments coming in. Master of Peace is saying, two legends in the game, smashing yep. it. I love his avatar. What is that? It's like, I can't even tell, but it looks super cool. A plain dot. Got, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> He's trying to showcase his eBay sales crashing. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> what's up, Leanne Litzenberger? Hey, guys. Just made it. Glad to have you here. Better late than never. We've got Sue Stinstream. I wish my last name was Stream. That would be cool. Um, a lot of broken thumbs. Come on, guys. Thumbs up, please. Yeah, smash that like button. Show some love. Mr. Exquisite, what's his name? He was at the... Mr. Exquisite, what's your name again? We met at the – he was at the last thrifting meetup. He was, yeah. I thought that face looked familiar. Yeah. I knew I was looking at money. What's your name again, Mr. Exquisite? I apologize, but super cool dude. I think he was in a couple clips that might be posting on, on YouTube soon. But uh, he was out there killing it. He was doing his thing. Darren, good to have you here, Darren. Appreciate you. Storefront Flip saying, what's up, brother? Brother from another mother. Good to see you here. Um, let me see. Do you have any other crazy stories that come in mind when you think about your thrifting journey over the last few years? Um, I'm going to share one about you that I remember. <laughs> Dude, we were – so Jesse and I, we were at one of the uh, Connecticut thrifting meetups. I think this was like maybe a year or a year and a half ago, and we were at Red, White, and Blue in Waterbury, Connecticut, and oh, we were filming. <laughs> he was filming in this little man. He wasn't like a big – like he was just this little man. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. And uh, he just spazzed out. I, I don't want to sit here and make up a story because I don't remember exactly what he said, but I can only remember the – what happened? He spazzed. He spazzed out, yeah. Like I'm not exaggerating. This little man went psycho, absolutely nuts. And I can't remember exactly what he said, but I just remember the feeling in my chest like this guy is going to like – Attack this place up, like attack, like he was saying. What don't, heck, explain the story. He kept saying, "Don't film me. Why are you filming me?" I'm like, "I'm not filming you. What are you talking about?" And I don't, I don't even think I. No, I was probably filming at the time because we we're all there together. But I'm filming the shelves. And I'm like walking by, and he looks at my camera and my phone and sees me filming. He's like, "Stop filming. What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm not filming you." He's like, "You better put that away." I'm like, "Why? I'm not even filming." He was just freaking out, but he wouldn't let it go, and he was following me. After I was like, "Okay, man," the whole my, time, and I had to put my phone in my pocket, and he was just staring at me and following me, and I felt really weird. <laughs> and you've had that happen to you? <laughs> yeah, that woman at Salvation <laughs> Army, dude, she freaked out. She thought, "Oh, you were there." Yeah, I was there. Yeah. That was in um, Vernon, Connecticut. No, yeah. Remember yeah, they merged? They, 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 yeah, they merged. I think that one's still open, right? Oh, maybe. I, don't, I, didn't, I never go that side of the state. Yeah, but this woman I was filming, and uh, I did get her in the film. And the funny thing is I posted it and zoomed in on it with, like, scary – because I'm just such a troll sometimes when someone, like, pisses me off. Um, and I'm just like, whatever. I probably shouldn't have done that thinking back to it. But um, I wasn't even filming her. But, yeah, she was spazzing out on me for, like, 25 minutes. I'm going to call the police. To, but oh, yeah. you never know. Like, who knows? Maybe they're in, like, the witness protection program or something, and they don't know. Like, <laughs> It's possible. I mean, I, I've, had, I've had people ask me, hey, what do you do when – you're filming. Do you feel weird? Do any do people ever come up to you? Oh yeah, man. I've had employees tell me not to film in thrift stores like multiple times. And I just put it away for the second and I pull it back out and I keep filming, which probably <laughs> shouldn't do, honestly. But uh, I gotta get the content. The things out. we do for you guys, you know I what know. I mean? It's true. It you don't realize we risk our lives out there. We, we risk our lives. It's very dangerous. <laughs> On the front line. <laughs> That's why YouTube has been raising our CPMs because they realize it's life or death. You know, I think um, mine's actually going down, sadly. I don't know well, why. I think all this – well, they all are right now because think oh, about that. it. Like all the advertisers are taking their money out because everyone's like hoarding their money right now. It's not I actually, working. I actually had a sponsorship that I was working on for my channel, a good one, a big one. And they just messaged me saying that they're not looking to do it anymore. And I already filmed the video. It took me so really? long. Yeah. And I should have just submitted it. Cause I wanted to do a few final touches on it and I've been putting off, you know, doing the final touches cause it's a pain to get back in the editor. And uh, then they reached out to me saying, Oh, we're going to have to put this on hold. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm feeling it for sure. I've had yeah. pull out. 
Yeah, I think right now is the time to, for all of us, um, I'll give my two cents and I'd love to hear your two cents. I think right now is a time where we all need to adapt. Um, we cannot continue to do exactly what we've been doing in the past to get us to where we are today. Um, in order to move forward over the next, I would say the next three to six months are going to be very uh, challenging um, mm -hmm. because even though this has only been going on for a month, the impact isn't going to just end like we haven't even really felt it yet. So I like for every month this economy is down, it's going to like be like two to three months of like suffering or challenges that are coming ahead. So I'm just hoping that this all ends soon. Um, but I think we all need to adapt and think outside the box. And I think the best example I can give is there's a guy that I follow. Um, his name's Pedro's, his last name starts with a B. I forget what it's called, but he has a podcast. It's called Empire or something. <clears throat> he runs um, Fit Body Boot Camp. So he has like over a thousand of those boot camps where you do the workouts with like the group of 20, 25, like CrossFit. And uh, I think this was in 2008. I'm not sure, but he had, he adapted and he's doing like all online physical training now, which is just like an example of like, you have to adapt to the market because nobody's going out. Nobody's going to go into these group training. So how can we adapt in our business? How can we start sourcing online? What can we do to, um, you know, position ourselves. And, and that's why I just put out the video I put out on my channel. I, I talked about 10 things you can do to grow your business now um, from, you know, reconciling your inventory to optimizing your listings, like you were saying, getting a new inventory management system in place, getting your bookkeeping and taxes in place. So what are your thoughts, man? What, are, what is your advice moving forward? Yeah, I mean, really, you got to adapt. I, I was, you know, putting some, I, I watch people on YouTube and they talk about Robin Hood and put money in stocks and everything. And this was before everything crashed, obviously. And everybody thinks they're a genius. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm just 10 times my money on Tesla. I just made all this money on AMD. It's like, well, yeah, everybody's making money. There's not a single stock you can pick that's going down. Did you see my post that I put out on my Facebook? Like I a did. Month ago? That made me think of this. And, um, you know, I, I had a little bit in stocks, not a lot. And uh, once everything took pretty much halved, and I'm like, oh, the cruise industry, I mean, Carnival Cruise, they're huge. I know a lot of people that take Carnival Cruises. They were selling for 70 bucks. When they were at $30, I bought 62 shares. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's probably at the bottom. That was really stupid because now it's at $11 and I just lost a lot of money. And uh, I decided, you know what? It's it's not easy to <clears throat> know when to get in and out of item things, whether it's thrifting, whether it's items that you're buying to resell, whether it's the stock market, right? You got to realize that if you're putting money on the line, it's not guaranteed. When you're buying things at thrift stores, it's it's a little different. You have more of a chance to sell it, especially if you follow the advice and learn about ranks and sell through and things like that. But this is money that you're putting towards something that might not sell for what you want it to. And you might lose money on the item and you might have to just to get rid of it and free up space and clear up your mind. And, um, you know, it, it it's really all about that, really about understanding how to take losses and understanding that just because you're in a bad time right now, it's not going to be bad forever. It's actually becoming kind of a decent time to possibly get into reselling because it's the worst time to get into it. And if you can manage now, and if you could get through this, then you will kill when it's great. I mean, it's the best time to start after Christmas, not December or November, because you're going to have crazy expectations thinking, wow, I'm going to make a thousand dollars every day because it's Christmas time. No, that's not the case. Now is actually a good time to see, Hey, can you actually do this? If you can't do it during this time, then you really have to think about if you want to be in a business like this, because there are no, you know, guarantees when you resell. Great advice, man. <clears throat> Definitely great advice. Are you buying any stocks right now? Yeah. Like I, I bought, a lot of carnival like an idiot like i just said i was buying Dude, i lost like a grand on carnival because i was trying to i was trying to catch it on the way down and yeah. um yeah do you put stop losses in i don't know if you could with yeah. robin hood probably not yeah <laughs> you, can, you can on robin hood but no i didn't i'm looking right now i bought 62 shares at 30 dollars and 38 cents i'm down 1148 dollars yeah. and it's there's yeah. proof right here i'm not lying i'm down a lot so yeah well, it's most crazy. most people are down, man. I lost about fifteen grand, um, and it's just because I had most of my income. I had you know a hundred thousand dollars and mostly index funds and stuff. So um, yeah, I did I did get out of <clears throat> I did get out of a lot of stuff before it, it tanked the other fifteen percent. And right now I'm just dollar cost averaging back in, which I think is good advice because right now you just don't know how much further it's going to continue to go down with all the uncertainty and 
everything going on right now. Nobody knows. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I was very it's... close to buying a lot of Vanguard, <laughs> a lot of Vu and stuff like that. And I, I was yeah. real close to buying it. I'm like, you know what? It could still drop another 50% tomorrow. I don't know. So I'm waiting it out a little bit for there to be a little more stabilization before I start throwing another two, three thousand $3,000 in there. Cause I could use that money reselling things that I know I'm going to make a little more money on at the moment, just to keep things afloat, keep things going. Cause Hey, you know, rent still has to be paid. Electric still has to be paid. Everything still has to be paid yeah. around here. Nobody's given me any breaks. Yeah. The good thing is for, for folks that are our age and there's some really good comments coming in from uh, Dak Barnett, Sue, um, mm -hmm. wait, wait and surf it. it out. Yeah. When we're young, you know, um, you know, for the average person, I know um, Darren's in the comments, Mr. Exquisite, he does stock trading for a living. I think he was saying the average person's not going to know how to trade stocks. And even the average stock trader is going to get beat by the S&P 500. Um, so my advice for a lot of folks right now, and even <clears throat> for myself right now, is I like dollar cost average back in is um, just hold it for the long term. If you invest for 5, 10, 15, 20 years out, I know some folks who are 16 and 70, you don't have that luxury, um, or maybe your strategy is a little bit different. But, um, you know, th this this stuff happens all the time. If you look over the last, like, 100 years, like, there's always ups and downs. Like, we've had, like, what, 11-year bull runs. So, I mean, it's just normal. It's part of the cycles. Life is a cycle, right? Life is a cycle. So, I think it's just part of the game. So, I think... Yeah, I think you're making a smart move, man. Um, yeah, just hold on. I'll be buying a lot more soon. I mean, I'm just going to start buying companies that I actually have faith in, companies that I actually believe in in the long term, and go from there, see what happens. Exactly. Uh, final words of wisdom for the folks out there who um, maybe they're running a reselling business or they're looking to get started, but right now they're just so discouraged with everything going on. They're scared. They're panicking. They're selling all their equipment. They're thrown in the towel. Uh, what advice would you give to the folks out there? Maybe some words of wisdom or some encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just stick through it, really. I, these things happen. The times like this happen where there's just slow periods. And this is just a slow period. Really, it's only been slow for a few weeks now. And people really are freaking out. But it has only been a few weeks. It hasn't been that long. Now is a great time to work on your backlog. Maybe try different methods of making money, right? There's um, merch by Amazon where you can make t-shirts, try and sell cool t-shirts like that, right? Make YouTube videos. There's ways there. If you're stuck at home and eBay sales are slow, try listing those same items on Amazon. See if they sell faster over <laughs> there. Really now's a great time to just try, throw everything at the wall because you can't lose. Right? I mean, you're, if you're already down <laughs> right now, just put it on somewhere else. Just work on something else. I've never sold on Poshmark. Really? I've sold a few items of clothing. I still have some items I need to get listed on eBay. I'll cross post them, right? Get it on in front of more people, in front of more eyes. Mm. Awesome advice. And I would like to add in right now, trim the fat right now. Stop spending money on stupid stuff. Sure. If you've got like, go through your subscriptions of like things that are just stupid, right? Not essential stuff, but we all like, that's what I was doing earlier today as I was going through. And I think I saved like over $300 a month just on <laughs> dumb things, just dumb things that I just <laughs> forgot about. And like, I had, I had forgotten to like take one of the cars off my insurance that I sold like two months ago. And that was like 50 <laughs> bucks a month. And I was just, just like stupid things. Like sometimes we all get so caught up in, you know, and I'm, I'm telling, I know this is embarrassing. It doesn't make me look good, but I'm, I'm being real Jesse. Like we all get so caught up in the go, 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 go that like, sometimes we can like make a lot of money just by like cutting the fat and like For sure. taking a look at our finances and whatnot. So Appreciate you, brother. Um, I know there's no one out there. You got a snowstorm. You were out there sourcing, you know, hitting snowmen on the side of the roads, knocking over mailboxes. I'm sliding all over the place, man. Awesome. <laughs> you got the Subaru though, right? So you got the all-wheel yeah, drive. Yeah, I, I got all-wheel drive, but it's still slippery out there. It's crazy. It's dumping, man. It is nonstop. It's sleeting. It's raining. It's snowing. It's doing everything outside right now. It's supposed to get about at least five inches, so we'll see what happens. Wow. Well, how can people find you um, on YouTube, Instagram? How can they follow you? That name right there, I think. Thrift School. Thrift School. Uh, <laughs> Thrift School uh, on YouTube. Thrift School on Instagram. I post on Instagram a lot. I post my sales. I think I just posted a bunch of sales on Amazon. I've been doing pretty great today. I could uh, check it right now. I mean, yeah, the building man. is still doing well. I am at uh, 31 units sold today for $1,390. So things are still moving. Things are still baby. And 27 of those items are merchant fulfilled. So uh, you, you know, can't make money online nowadays. It's over, it's man. It's the apocalypse. It's crazy. <laughs> 
Well, good for you, man. I'm really proud of you and um, hope everybody goes out and checks out your channel. Uh, Mr. Exquisite, thanks so much for coming in with a lot of great comments. eBay Addicts, appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Bam C, Sue, Carter Maxwell came in the house. Good to see you, Carter. And um, thank you so much, Jesse, for coming on. Stay safe, brother. Everyone else watching, stay safe. And um, just have faith that all this is going to pass. It will pass. And uh, do everything you can today to prepare yourself for tomorrow. And you're going to be ahead of the curve. So appreciate you. Much love, Jesse. Awesome. Thanks, man. Hold down Connecticut for me, man. Got it. Peace.